up here. The most electrifying man on YouTube entertainment is getting a movie. That's right. Uh, fucking Olivia here. Say hi. Hi. She's driving and two up is... Uh, oh, bugger. Look at that guy's broken down. Anyway, two up is here and I have to talk about Lucha Underground. That's right. As we make our way to our destination here, Olivia driving. We got fan mail baby back there. He's, he's trying to sleep. He's trying to sleep. And do up is like, uh, uh, it's time for a Lucha Underground review. That's right. Lucha Underground this week did not disappoint. The temple has exploded. That's right. We're going to start off with the first match of the night. In the beginning, we seen a cutscene where Eva Lee's waiting in Katrina's office and was saying how she wants a chance at the Disciples of Death to get her fucking trio's championship back. That's right, she's in the trio with Angelico and Son of Havoc and she wants a rematch for those belts. And well, Katrina wasn't having it, she says, but you can have a match tonight against a new returning trio's team. So we had the team of Ivelisse, Angelico, and Son of Havoc going up against Chavo Guerrero and the crew. Oh, whoa, let me tell you. Chavo Guerrero returns to Lucha Underground, brings his crew to the temple. Fucking Cisco and Cortez, and the three of those buggers went head to head with the former trio's champions, uh, Ivelisse and Helico and Son of Havoc. And this match was off the wall insane. I, Ivelisse, has to be hands down one of the best female wrestlers I've ever seen in my life. If I ever saw a match with Eva Lee against Sasha Banks, I'd probably shit me pants. That would be fucking awesome. At the end of the match, Chavo Guerrero and the crew were on the outside of the ring, and uh, uh, Eva Lee and Helico and Son of Havoc had the upper hand. So they set them up. Oh, this was the craziest spot. Off the top rope with a flying crossbody was Eva Lee. At the same time, off the second rope with a moonsault, Son of Havoc, and at the same time, and Helico over the top rope, fucking dive to the outside. All three at the same time, Arthur Chavo Guerrero and the crew. Holy shit. And Helico hits his finisher. It's kind of like the stomp, kind of like Alberto Del Rio does, except he jumps a lot farther into the middle of the ring, slamming down on that bugger, and gets the win for the former trio's champion team. Oh shit, what a match! So after the trio's t uh, the former trio's champion team got their win, Chavo Guerrero was in the ring and he was pissed. He was yelling at the crew and getting up in their faces. I mean, these buggers are a team, but they were. He was going after him. So after he was going after him, guess who comes to the ring? Tejano. That's right. He comes down to the ring with his big bull rope and he cleans house. That's right. He wants a piece of Chavo. If you don't remember from season one, these two had a little bit of a beef and well, they got to moving in the ring. He beats the shit out of Cortez and Cisco, but Chavo slipped out of the bottom rope and as he's running backwards, he's yelling, I'm not afraid of you, I'm not afraid of you. Well, Tejano will probably get a piece of Chavo Guerrero soon enough. In the second match of the night on the Lucha Underground program, we find ourselves watching the debut of Joey Ryan. That's right, Joey Ryan makes his debut at the temple. I loved it, he comes out, he's got his lollipop, he's got his hair slicked back, his big 70s mustache, his fucking members only jacket, the hair, and he's, he's dumping the oil on his chest and on his belly and inside of his drawers. Absolutely hysterical, I love this beggar. But I was, I, I was really, Shocked to see who he was gonna fight. That's right, all of a sudden they they say, and his opponent, Cage, oh man, Cage, the machine, comes to the ring. If you don't know Cage, he makes Brock Lesnar look like Spike Dudley. <laughs> I ain't lying, look him up. Cage is solid, oh this bugger is hot. It's Cage versus the debut of Joey Ryan, and these two, I'm gonna be honest, it was probably the best match of the program. Maybe because I was excited for Joey Ryan, but these two went back and forth. These two went after each other. The moveset in this match was off the hook. 
hip toss into a backbreaker, pump handle power slams, inside out power slams, super kicks, power bombs onto a knee, a second rope noon salts, absolutely incredible. But in the end, Cage hits him with his finisher into standing suplex as he's holding Joey Ryan up in the air, standing suplex, brings him down into the pile driver and pins Joey Ryan. So though Joey Ryan made his debut in Lucha Underground, he lost against Cage. I'm gonna be honest, I can't blame him. Cage is a fucking machine. They don't call him machine for nothing. But after Cage gets his win, he's all excited and he's flexing it out. Yeah, in the ring, back me. Guess who comes running down? Johnny Mundo, yeah, everybody is cheering, Johnny Mundo, Johnny Mundo starts to get a piece of fucking Cage, these two are after it, Johnny Mundo comes running in the ring, catches Cage with his spear, right off the bat, tries to set him up for the end of the world, Cage was too quick, and he fucking slams Johnny, uh, Johnny Mundo back, at the end of the program we found out that next week's main event, gonna be Johnny Mundo versus Cage, Fucking excited for that one. Do have got a little wing wang stiffy for this fucking match coming up next week. All right, last match of the evening. We find ourselves seeing the main event. Oh my god. Do Ops, absolute favorite wrestler in Lucha Underground, Prince Puma. Yeah, going up against probably one, well, I wouldn't say the biggest heel in Lucha Underground because that would probably be the champion, Will Muertes. Yeah, you know that bugger sitting high on top of the temple with his championship belt, watching over everything that goes on. Well, he's probably the biggest deal. I would say the second biggest heel in Lucha Underground, Pentagon Jr. This guy, I gotta be honest, he scares the shit out of Dew Up. The way he's got that mask on, and you can just see those beady white eyes, and he, he paints the bottom of his face right here to look like a skeleton with that mask. This bugger is scary. And well, Prince Puma wasn't having it. That's right. He ain't afraid of anybody. And well, frankly, neither is Pentagon Jr. Because uh, Pentagon Jr.'s whole thing is called, uh, I hope I say this right, Cero uh, Merde. Uh, zero fear. Uh, translate it yourself. I hope I said it right. But the crowd was so split down the middle. They're chanting, Cero Merde. And then at the other side, they're going, let's go Puma, Sarah Muerto, let's go Puma. The crowd was split down the middle on who they wanted to see win this match. And I mean, this was like the biggest spot fest on the planet. Every time Prince Puma went to go hit a move, Pentagon Jr. reverses it and vice versa. Or, I mean, backstabber into a reversal or a moot salt into a reversal. At one point, Prince Puma did this moot salt coming off the second rope. And Pentagon Jr. jumps in the air and drop kicks him right in the belly. Oh man, I absolutely love the way these two work that match. In the end, this was a crazy finish. Um, Pentagon Jr. went to set up Prince Puma into a surfboard. But it wasn't exactly a, a surfboard that you would, a regular surfboard, you know, he's got his feet up in the air and he's holding on to his arms as he's outstretched. Well, he kind of like reversed it almost into a choke. So I, I kind of hard to explain. So as Pentagon Jr. is laying on the mat, holding Prince Puma up in the air in the surfboard, he maneuvers Prince Puma backwards enough where he gets his shoulders on the mat. The referee starts the count. One. Two, Prince Puma arches his neck and he's, all of his weight is on the back of his head. His, his shoulders come off the mat and the ref counts three. Everybody's like, oh my God, Pentagon Jr. just won. I got, oh, I'm afraid I've got some bad news. Prince Puma won. That's right, because Pentagon Jr. was laying on the mat when Prince Puma arched his neck and put all that weight on the back of his head. His shoulders came off, but Pentagon Juniors were still on the mat. So Pentagon Junior fucked himself. That's right, he lost the match. Brett screwed Brett, well, Pentagon Junior screwed Pentagon Junior. Oh, what an ending to that. After Pentagon Junior finds out that he lost the match, he super kicks the ref right in the face. Holy shit, to a pop that jumped right out of each other. I was like, oh man, he killed the ref. Well, Puma wasn't having any of that, and he went and he attacked Pentagon Junior for those actions, and right at the end, 
Puma sets up Pentagon Jr. in that arm bar where Pentagon Jr. had used so many times to break people's arms, just like he did the champ, Mil Muertes. Puma let go. That's right. He's, he says, I'm too good for this. I am not going to break this bugger's arm. So that's how the program ended. Holy shit. What a fucking Lucha Underground. Did I forget to tell you? We finally got to see Rey Mysterio in a cutscene. That's right. He was t sitting there talking about the legend of the Aztec and the legend of the Lucha Warriors. So maybe soon enough we'll see that asshole actually wrestle the fucking match in Lucha Underground. Oh, bugger. That's all do up as this week for Lucha Underground Review. Like this video, leave a comment, tell Do Up if you've been watching Lucha Underground and if you like it. Tell Do Up if you've been watching Lucha Underground because Do Up's been talking about it. That's what I, I, I really want to know if I've turned you on to watching Lucha Underground because I like it so much. It, it really make me feel good that doing these reviews and letting you guys no, what I think of Lucha Underground is inspired you to watch. That's what Do Up wants to know. So like the video, leave that comment, and if you haven't done it already, subscribe for more fucking Do Up. Yeah! You want to say goodbye? No, I wish you shut up. <laughs>